Okay. Entonces, ¿está escuchando? Hola. ¿Esto anda? No, anda. Sí, sí. Bueno. Sí. Como el link ha cambiado, pero no sé si me Ahora estoy mal. Ah, al final podríamos haber puesto un capítulo de alguna serie, ¿no? Vamos a empezar, ¿no? Podemos empezar, ¿no? Se podría empezar, ¿no? O... Que venga, si hay gente sabe, me pregunta. Exacto. Y con el delay no se arranca nadie, ¿no? El acta que se que enviaste que está en un congreso. Ah, está bien. Esto. Ahora debe ser aquí Hay gente. Hay gente, hay gente. Tres, tres. Ok. After the usual technical problems, meeting chat. Thank <laughs> you.
Juan, uh, hello, everybody. I'm Juan de Gregorio. And, well, I'm going to talk about the work I've been doing uh, in this last year uh, as part of my PhD, as part of my as PhD students. Well, uh, well, let's uh, suppose we have some stochastic system, which um, well, it's kind of like a black box. We don't really know uh, how it works, well, how, how it's, what's happening inside. What we have is uh, an output, some uh, ordered sequence of observations. And we would like to estimate somehow the entropy of the system by just looking at these observations. This is a question that has many applications in uh, physics, linguistics, ecology, uh, and many, many other fields. So uh, if we take a random variable x that has L possible outcomes, x1 up to xl, the entropy of, of x is a, a measure of uh, the uncertainty of, of x, and it can be calculated as a uh, as a minus the sum of uh, the probability of each count outcome times the, the logarithmic of the probability. So uh, the most basic uh, or simple example would be a coin toss, just a binary system with, well, uh, two possible outcomes, uh, heads one and tails zero. And in this case, uh, well, uh, the system is defined by a, a probability of one of the outcomes. And in that case, the entropy is this uh, is this formula where it's maximum where the probability is uh, equal to a half meaning that both outcomes have the same probability and it's uh, zero when the probability is zero or one in that case the uncertainty is, is zero so if we don't know the exact values of the probabilities we can know the exact value of of the entropy in a real case we only have access to a finite sequence of, of data. And uh, in the example above, it would be repeating the coin toss, for example, n equals uh, 10 times. So given a sequence, we need some kind of uh, estimator. Uh, well, here uh, some uh, reviews, some basic um, things we're going to use uh, later. Uh, so if we want to estimate with some quantity A using an estimator, well, uh, the mean value of, of A, <laughs> the mean value of A can be calculated as um, applying the estimator to every possible sequence of length n and weighting it by the probability of having uh, that sequence. Uh, okay, what we usually want in an estimator is to be as accurate as possible, meaning that it's as close to the true value we want to calculate. So with that in mind, there are two important concepts, which is the bias and the standard deviation. The bias is a measure of the difference between the mean value of an estimator and the quantity we want to estimate. And uh, it, the estimator is said to be unbiased if these two quantities are equal. And it, this is a, a plot uh, of an unbiased estimator. And this is a plot of a bias estimator because the mean value of, of the distribution of the estimator is not the same as uh, the quantity we want to estimate. And on the other hand, also it's important to consider the, the standard deviation, which measures the, the dispersion of the, of the estimator. Uh, so ideally, we would like an estimator with low bias and low standard uh, deviation. So, for example, uh, an estimator of the probability uh, is uh, the maximum likelihood estimator, which, given a sequence, if we want to estimate the probability of some of the outcomes, we can calculate the number of times it appears in the sequence. We divide it by the length of the sequence. And what we get is an unbiased estimator of the probability. So, one could think 
of building an entropy estimator by plugging uh, these estimated probabilities into the formula for the entropy, which would be something like this. But if you do that, you get a biased estimator of the entropy. And this bias can be very significant, especially in a case where the number of possible outcomes is larger than the sequence length. So, for example, in a very under sample reaching and consider the uniform probabilities. So, in that case, the, the entropy, the true entropy of the system is a maximum and it's given by the logarithm of L. Um, given a short sequence, most of the elements will not appear in it because of I said, lack of space because there isn't like room for everything. And the ones that do appear will most likely appear uh, just once. So the estimated probabilities would be approximately one over n or zero if the element uh, is not present in the sequence. So using the formula for the estimate, uh, the entropy estimator, this would give us a value of logarithm of n. So the bias in this case will be the logarithm of n divided by l which is negative and in this regime this can be a time tending to minus infinity so the bias can be can be huge so there have been many attempts uh, to find better estimators especially in this under sample regime these are some of the most popular ones uh, there are many others um well they, they share some in, uh, characteristics in common that is that they are usually constructed considering only independent sequences and they are mostly analyzed and compared only or mostly for these sequences so to to this list of estimators uh, we thought of adding a new one uh, which, which was published in a couple of months ago in chaos solitons and fractals and the main idea behind this is well to make two corrections to the um, to the usual formula for the entropy what one is an adjustment to account for the missing elements in a final sequence and the other is a correction to the probabilities that takes into account uh, the order of the sequence uh, for the first item we consider a, what is called a horvitz thompson estimator in which in the formula for the entropy instead of summing over all possible elements we sum only over the elements that appear in the sequence and we divide each term by the probability of the element being present in the sequence which can be calculated like this so notice here that uh, the, the the sum of the probabilities of the elements that appear in the sequence is generally less than one but by construction the estimated probabilities are always sum to one so we also need a, a correction to the probabilities what we do is to correct them by a, a constant c yeah. yeah the estimated probabilities are references yes mm -hmm. is if you have a very short sequence but uh, there are a lot of possible outcomes uh, you will not see all of them in your sequence for example if, you, if your sequence is just 10 elements but your possible outcomes are 500 there are many elements that they don't have zero probability but they will not appear in the sequence sorry yeah what appears over the sequence, some of them will be one. Some of them will be one. Some, some, if it's some other. Ah, the sum will be one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but if you have short sequence, yeah. if you have only two events, one appears one time, another appears ten times. Yeah. If it's one over ten and nine over ten, some of them will be one. Will be one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but the exact probabilities might be less than. Oh, well, that's, that's the thing. You, okay. you don't know. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? It's okay. Okay. So, uh, what, any other question? 
So uh, our proposal is uh, to correct the, these probabilities by taking into account the order in which the elements appear in the sequence. And we do that, we, our propose is uh, the, the following algorithm that we, well, we given a sequence, we divide it uh, in half, in two halves. Um, well, for the first half, we consider like the, the correction is just one. And we start uh, looking at every uh, observation in the, in the second half. So for example, if the first element of the second half is something that appeared before in the sequence, then we don't change the, the correction. But if it's a new element, we subtract this quantity, which is equal to the estimated probability of this new element in this new sequence. So, and we start doing that for uh, sequentially for every element in the second half. So if an element is something that appeared before, we don't do anything. If it's something that didn't appear before, we uh, subtract this, this factor. And we do that until we arrive to the, to the end of the sequence. So, uh, well, this is the, the final value of the correction, which is just applying the same thing over and over. Um, well, if we plot everything together, I mean, uh, the co correct, correcting probabilities and the Horvitz Thompson estimator, this is our proposed estimator. And what is new or interesting about this is that, to the best of our knowledge, at least, this is the first estimator that takes into account the order in which the elements appear in the sequence. For all other estimators I showed you before, uh, for example, a permutation of the sequence will yield the same result because they only count the number of times each element appears in the sequence. So in, in, uh, on the other hand, for our estimator, a permutation of the sequence might uh, give a different result. So uh, is your, your measure yeah. It's differentiated to have, for instance, uh, one zero one zero one from one 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 zero zero zero. Uh, yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. Or, at least it might be different, depending uh, so where take, where. Take into account of but uh, yes, exactly, yes. Uh, and why this? We think this would be important or interesting. Well, because the additional sequence might be correlated. So for example, it could be a Markov chain. A uh, Markov chain is something uh, that has many applications in physics, biology, linguistics, and many fields. And a um, for Markovian system, the transition probability of a future event depends only on the present state and not on all the previous history. And on the other hand, for independent sequence, the probability of a future depend doesn't depend on, on any on any history of the sequence. So uh, remember that uh, the mean value of the estimator depends on the probability distribution because of this factor. So the performance of the estimator may be different if one considers a Markovian system or what, an independent system. So taking this into account, we wanted to do something that we saw that it wasn't done before, which is to compare these uh, estimators uh, in two Markovian cases and compare it with our proposed estimator. So we compare it for uh, binary Markovian sequences and uh, under sample Markovian sequences. And um, well, we compare uh, the bias of the estimator, the standard deviation, and the mean square error, which is the square sum of the bias and the standard deviation. And again, what we want of an estimator is to have low bias and low standard deviation. So overall, a low mean square error. So first, we consider Markovian binary sequences. Uh, so in that case, well, the L is two. Given a value of n, there are two to the n possible uh, sequences of length n. And uh, these systems are uniquely defined by a pair of independent transition probabilities, which are the probability of going from zero to zero and the probability of going from one to one. And uh, the stationary probability of the outcome one is, can be calculated with this formula. So we can calculate the exact entropy uh, as functions of uh, the, trans the transition probabilities. So for a given value of uh, n, we consider 
all possible combinations of the transition probabilities. So here it's a particular case of um, sequence length n equals to four, where well uh, we calculated here the bias of all these estimators uh, as functions of the transition probabilities from zero to one. So here the more blue means a lower bias, which means a better estimator. More yellow means more bias, means a worse estimator. We can see like some pattern that for all of these estimators, the region that uh, has a higher bias is near this uh, top uh, right corner, where the, pro the transition probabilities are uh, approximately one. And in, well, in, it does a very particular case because for example, in this case, if a sequence starts with a one, it's probably going to be all ones, especially if it's a short sequences, even though the probability of zero is actually equal to the probability of one. So in, in that's a very difficult case to accurately estimate the entropy. Other thing we can see is that the regions of uh, lowest bias, the, which, the bluest regions are different for all these estimators. For example, for the first one, it's around here. For this one, it's around this here. For this here, it's around here. So it's not uh, straightforward by looking at these color maps, which uh, has an overall uh, lowest bias. Yeah, it's here. Uh, yeah, I will talk about more <laughs> later. Uh, well, and then we, we did the same for the standard deviation. And here we can see a more clear pattern in the sense that uh, all of them have a lowest deviation around this corner, the uh, left bottom corner. And the regions of worst uh, deviation, the yellow regions, are more or less all these like L regions, which are around uh, these values of the transition probabilities. So here it's very clear by looking at, at these color maps, which are the ones that has a lower deviation, which are the NFP and the B estimator. Uh, well, we got, then we wanted to see how this changes when we change the sequence length. So uh, we did a similar analysis uh, for different values of N and we calculated the, the average bias, the average deviation, and the average mean square error as function, functions of the length size, of the sequence size. And well, we can see in terms of bias, for example, our estimator is the, the red one. And uh, it works very good. It's uh, from n equals to three, it's the one with lower bias. But when we consider the deviation, it has, it's not very good, it's the red one. It has a very large uh, deviation. And other thing we can notice is that um, this uh, deviation is in general, uh, like more uh, important than the bias. It, it, so the, when we consider both of them, the plot of the deviation is pretty similar to the mean square error. Uh, well, again, uh, given uh, our the, our estimator and the problem we have, the, the deviation is not very good in terms of mean square error. And where well, we can see that the best ones are uh, the NFP and the the estimators. And then we wanted to see what happens in an undersample reaching, because remember that that's the case where the entropy estimation has more problems. So for that, we consider a block sequences in which, a given a, a sequence, we group it in blocks of size n. For example, blocks of size two would be to take a, a, the outcomes in pair and so on, in pairs and so on. So there are n minus n plus one blocks of size n in the sequence, and there are two to the n possible blocks. And let's consider that this original sequence is composed of independent events with the probability of one equals to p. And in that case, well, the overlapping of blocks, uh, the way they are constructed, induces correlation. For, for example, the block zero, one, zero, can only work to the block 101 with probability p or 100 with probability 1 minus p. 
So the dynamics of these log sequences is Markovian, even though the original sequence is uh, not. And the block entropy in that case, well, it can be calculated as this. It's a linear function of the block size. And these uh, block sequences are an interesting setup because depending on the values of the sequence length and the block size, we can be in an undersample regime. And even though there can be a large number of possible outcomes, the transition probabilities only depend on one parameter, the probability, so it's easy to, to study. And it has many applications because they are usually like the building blocks to calculate some important uh, or interesting concepts in information theory, such as entropy rate, predictability gain, and they are also a tool that can be used to estimate the, the memory of, of a sequence. So what we did was we took for here a particular example of block size equals to six. That means that there are two to the six, 64 uh, possible blocks and the sequence length is 20. So we are in an undersample regime. And we calculated uh, the bias, the sigma, and the mean square error of all, all the estimators uh, as functions of the probability. Well, we can see, uh, well, the first thing we can notice is that the behavior of the estimators in terms of bias and sigma are kind of opposite because the estimators with higher bias are usually the ones with lower standard deviation. Another uh, thing we can notice is that our uh, estimator, the red one, in terms of bias, again, is very good. It's probably one of the best overall. But again, in terms of deviation, it has some problems. And when, when it, we consider the mean square error, it's not very clear, <laughs> again, which is the better estimator. Because, for example, for low values of the probability, it's the blue one, the better, but then it goes terribly wrong. And on the other hand, uh, for low values of the probability, the pink one is very bad, but when we approach to higher values of the probability, it's uh, the best. Yeah. Is there an exact ratio of the bias to sigma? No, this is, in that, in this case, is uh, estimated. Um, because there are a lot of, yes. Because the, in the case of the binary, it's, it's exact because there are many, uh, there are a few, Parameters here there are a lot, so it's. Um, the... How are the tempo bias? Well, we like average over like like ten thousand sequences, so it's okay. yeah, it's it's more. Uh, well, and again, we wanted to see what happened when we changed the length of the sequences, so we calculated the average bias, average sigma, and average mean square error. And we plot it as functions of the, the sequence length. Well, again, it's the same kind of pattern in the sense that uh, the estimators with higher bias are the ones with lower sigma. Our estimator is good uh, in terms of bias, but in terms of deviation, it's not very good. And in terms of average mean square error, there is like maybe one clear winner, which is the this brown, the NSB estimator. Um, and well, this difference tends to be smaller as the number of uh, as the length of the sequence increases. So well, here it's basically what I just said. <laughs> um, OK, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, pro the product of the bias and the product of if it's something constant. Mm, I actually, I haven't tried, but it could be, yeah, I, I didn't think about it, but uh, yeah, it could be a good. Thank you. Well, just to finish what, uh, what we have developed, a new entropy estimator that takes into account the history of, of, of order of the sequence, which again, to the best of our knowledge, is the best one, is the best one, is the first one to do this. Uh, also, we have made a detailed comparison 
of some of the most used estimators for Markovian sequences. We can see that in terms of bias, our new estimator performs very good, but when we also consider the deviation, well, it's, it has some problems. And overall, the, the one that has a best, best performance, at least for this, these systems, it seems to be this NSB estimator. So, well, thank you for listening. And if you have questions. Uh, any questions? Can we go to the, the Zoom session first? Oh, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, just a couple of questions. So, suppose that somebody in the, the web lab, so an experimentalist, measure a sequence that supposedly is, is, uh, is random. Similar to random and obtain endpoints of these things. So she calculates your entropy picture. And now she can take another measure. So now she has another sequence of n plus one and compute again your, your uh, entropy. So can your entropy inform her about whether this set of measurements is still not enough to obtain what she really needs to obtain in terms of information? Okay. Or, so, I mean, on the represented number of measurements or, or not. So, possibly it's related to the bias or the, or the error of the estimation. Well, um, more or less, but if you go back to the formula of the. Yeah. I mean, it's not. May not be an indicator in the sense you, you mean it, but. If, for example, if we have a very under sample regime where every element is different, I mean, it's every observation you make, it's a, something that didn't appear before. Yeah, this, this expression has a limit. This is like one minus the log, natural logarithm of two. So if you calculate uh, this and you get a value that is approximately that, it probably means that you are in a very under sample region. So I would say that if you start making more observations and you start like getting values that uh, like I start to be smaller that one minus logarithm, natural logarithmic of two, you probably are approaching to a good region in which you have enough data. But it's not a very te a test, very like formal. But uh, that's what I did a lot of times. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, I would ask you if you've got to explain again the idea behind your regression because you can do and also okay. would it work with continuous random variables because that is easy to say if we have the same one problem. No, I no. Yeah, or discretize it some way, but yeah, not just a continuous variable. I would say no. And in terms of the motivation, well. The idea, well, I mean, we took the idea of one of the entropy estimators that they did the model less the same, but they, they calculated this C in a very different way. And what uh, I wanted to try to do it is like, uh, because this C is actually, it has an exact value, which is this. It's the sum of the probabilities of the things that appear in the sequence. So if you know, if you want, if you want to try like uh, a numerical example, you can create a sequence with known values of the probability. You calculate this, and this is the that C that the exact yes. So of course, in a, an experiment, you don't know it. So what I tried 
to do is like imitate this in a sense that or, or at least the opposite because this is actually equal to one minus the things that don't appear in the sequence so the idea was okay if i take like this is my original sequence then how uh, how this changes when i the thing the probability of the things that don't appear in the sequence maybe i can do think of it like uh, in a sequential way but that's the, the main idea that's because that's why i subtract this factor which is the estimated probability of the new element because we are, well, i'm trying to imitate this uh, so that was the motivation yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And perhaps I missed something in the trivial, but uh, I didn't quite see the sequence in how. I mean, would you start with this correction from the second element and draw a line? Yeah, that's a very good question. The idea was again like trying to have both in like the if you want a reservoir of elements and both uh, the things that are. Uh, like new, like trying to have the more statistics or at least the best statistics in both of them. So that's why I thought that half would be better. I tried like, okay, what happens if instead of half, I take a third and it tends like probably to like overestimate this C because if you take, for example, if you take only the first, the second is probably always going to be a new, new thing. The third one is always going, and then, uh, yeah, I found out that it's not uh, very good. I mean, it's probably not universal because it's not a theorem. So maybe for some kind of sequences, you could say the third or the half. But yeah, the, my, my idea was, OK, <laughs> split it in half and Yeah, but the thing is that for some kind of experiments, you can't control when you get a new observation because it may be something you can't, you're not doing an experiment, you get your data. Uh, so maybe you don't have more observations. So yeah, maybe in the case that you are controlling and you can get any observations you want, or maybe you can, yeah, try the, something like that. Yeah. It's no, no, no. It's very difficult because they take, they like make some averages of models, and it's it's actually one of the more uh, difficult things. Uh, so probably that's why it's better. <laughs> but yeah, the idea is like they consider like the um, the probabilities come from a Dirichlet distribution. Well, if there you if you have some beta, some and they consider like all possible betas, they integrate. It's <laughs> it's. Uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Sequence, some information about the, the, from the output, from 
Yeah, yeah, probably such in some cases such large large bias and large standard deviation doesn't make sense because the entropy can take those values. So yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Gracias. 